Alhamdulillah, and is with me, Chief Economic Advisor at Allianz. Mohamed, you started the thinking off on this in terms of how one minute you hear one thing and you agree with them, the next minute you hear the opposite argument and you agree with them. So I ask you the question I'm going to ask you, what level of deaths are we prepared to accept? So this is a really tough because it's life versus livelihoods. Or if you're living in a poor developing country, it's the risk of dying from a virus or dying from hunger. So it's a really tough one. Look, the reality is we are reopening. The, the pressure to reopen is, is so intense. But let's focus on learning. There's lots we don't know, Richard. But we're going to run a massive natural experiment. In the U.S. alone, we're going to have states ahead of the federal guidelines, states behind the federal guidelines, and states in line. We're going to get a ton of data. We need to judge not only the risk we took taking with, it, with respect to infection, but how people will behave, how businesses will behave. I don't know what the right answer is, but I do know that a political decision has been taken, and we've got to learn and collect data and adapt quickly if we're going to get that balance right over time, because it's going to be over time that we're going to get it right. We're going to live with the virus for a while. You see, this is another thing we're going to be really coming to a conclusion on. This idea of we're going to have to live with the, 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 the virus until there's a vaccine, which is a long way off. And this is straining every sinew of economic thinking, societal thinking, health thinking. Can the three, in your view, act in harmony? So they can if you have a vaccine, as you just pointed out, or if you have very sophisticated testing and tracing. We're not going to get there quickly. So we are going to flip-flop. Don't think of it as a smooth reopening. We're going to reopen. We're going to learn. We may well have to shut bits of the economy down. It's going to be very difficult for a decision maker to shut the whole economy down again. You would need a major out outbreak of infection. That's why the health experts wanted us to go slowly. Right, but let's take the Seoul example in South Korea, where there an outbreak, admittedly a cluster outbreak, predicated around nightclubs. Uh, if we started to see something like that around, say, the subway in New York, or use of the subway, you would, ha or um, the, the governor Andrew Cuomo would have no choice. Regard, I mean, regardless. Of, uh, of economic effect. You see, my, uh, you, you've started it off again, Mohammed. The pendulum swinging backwards and forwards between the different uh, protagonists. Yeah, the question is how big are the swings? And, and the hope is over time, the swings become small. Look, the really scary example is Singapore. Singapore thought it had this lick and then it had to shut down completely. So Korea at least could isolate it, could test, could trace and could keep going. You know, I, I think of this as we used to live in this really sophisticated jigsaw puzzle that was put together. The infection has messed everything up. Now we're trying to put the puzzle back together and we don't have all the pieces. So it's not gonna fit even, I tell you, look at China. China has opened up 80, 90% and yet economic activity came down in April, why? because the world is opening up in an unsynchronized manner. This country, the United States, is opening up in an unsynchronized manner. So it's going to be a lot of bumps along the way. And hopefully, I say hopefully, because there's nothing predestined right. about this, the pendulum will get sm smaller in its swings. You started the thinking up on this, didn't you? I mean, everybody was aware it had to be thought of, but you crystallised it. You realised early on that this Faustian debate, as opposed to uh, Fauci debate, this Faustian bargain that we are going to have to make is, is, is deeply, deeply uncomfortable. Very much so. We make it in our, in our own lives, but never to that extent. I came across it in the 80s, Richard, when I worked on a, on a fragile and failed state. And that's the reality there. We've never experienced this at the level of a global economy, and we've never experienced it at the level of advanced economies. So there's going to be loss of judgment. It is really, really hard. Um, you know, my own gut feeling is that people were way too naive about how easy it would be to reopen this economy, that it's, they thought it was going to flick a switch and everything will come back on. 
It turns out there are health issues, there are economic issues, and there are behavioral issues. We don't know how people are going to react. I know of families, Richard, right. right now, some are willing to engage, some are not, and they're the same family. What are they going to do? Mohamed al thank you very much for starting us off on this road and for giving us the points upon which we can now discuss with, with others. Thank you very much, Saf.